Hi there, and welcome back again to GM Tips. Um, this today for me is going to be amusing on NPCs, and just NPCs in general. And for me, I love doing some musings on favorite NPCs and, and what I created that was really good as a GM, or memorable for me. So, NPCs, how do you make them? Well, pretty much the way you make a player character. The question is, do you run an NPC as a one-time event? Are they a recurring event or, or kind of a centering for your party? Are they a member of the party's party? What style works best as a GM and a DM? And, and it varies. I think we all have our different opinions on it as DMs and GMs. Some of us like to be a part of our groups. And because we don't get to play very much, we put in NPCs not only to help the party, but it gives us a sense of kind of playing out the, the scenario itself. Even though we know some information, we like to play out some things as well in the adventure, be a part of the fun and, and be a part of things. Sometimes we just like them as a reoccurring kind of a fun, humorous um foil maybe to the party or helper to the party or even a gathering information point or it could be a focal point of selling items, trading items, trading stories. Um, there's a lot you can do with an NPC. Sometimes we just like to have them as a one current time recur or one time occurrence where the party either confronts them, they're a bad guy, a boss character, um, maybe a minor bad guy, maybe it's you know, help. So we do different things for these things. Um, the question that you have to answer for yourself is, what kind of role do you see your NPCs playing for the party? And the party is going to help dictate that. I mean, at the end of the day, whether you love it or hate it, the party is going to dictate whether your NPC comes back again. Perfect, for instance, on that. I had a situation with Rain of Winter. I put in a harrower, or a beginnings of a harrower, for the party. And what is a harrower? They're kind of a mystical, fortune-telling, magical creature that uses harrow cards, or tarot cards, to battle monsters, help the party, tell fortunes, enhance people's scores, depending on their draws of the cards. They're like a mystic, almost. Uh, of the party, uh, a, a tarot reading mystic, uh, very different than the psychic characters or the occult characters, that they have a different flair to them. And they're pretty unique to the inner sea where I run the characters in Pathfinder. Well, the nice thing is you can make a harrower work in any system, and they're kind of cool because there's, there's just something mystique-wise about them. So I am I am really uh, um Excited about Zorak Zoraides joining the party. He's Mauritian. He has a Varician accent. And he tells the things and the tales and does the Varician points of views with the things. So that's kind of what he's doing. Now, Zorak is one of those characters that you kind of just look into and say, wow, he's mystical, he's fun. And the party skipped over. So I'm like, well, crap. So then I looked at a gnome, and I had a gnome in there. And I thought, okay, the gnome the gnome will be good. The gnome will be a vigilante. He'll kind of give to the party a little bit. And they started to work with him, and then he died off. So really the one that I, they picked that I thought would be the least likely for them to match up with was a little pixie named Remily. And Rem, all she was meant to be was just a little swashbuckler who kind of annoyed the party but gave them some information. She was a right hand to a dryad in the forest um, in Taldor where they were adventuring. And it happened to be that they kind of, you know, one of the guys there was a, a, a fey-blooded sorcerer, Damien. Damien has this charm to him, and he's a flirt. Remily liked him. First, he's a fay. Second, he's a flirt. Three, he's kind of interesting. Okay. And then she saw Pain and the Elf, another type of fay. Hmm. This one lies all the time. 
and is a bit of a trickster. Well, that had some fond memories for her because she's known people in the forest that are like that. So all of a sudden, this party becomes interesting to her. She tags along. The party begins to like her. She's cool. She's small. She doesn't get in the way. She's not like this boss person that runs up there and takes on everybody. She's kind of interesting. And she can do some different things. So, I really enjoyed the fact that they worked with her and kind of built a relationship. And she kind of almost became a companion to both Damien and to um, Painbin. Well, Oren, the Azamar, kind of got to like her too because he saw Remily as kind of cute, funny, brought some little things to the table, helped the party at times, could tell them little tidbits that they wouldn't have otherwise known um, in the Fey aspect of things. All of a sudden, she's a main part of the party, and she has been through five of the Adventure Path modules with them and has grown, along with Greta, who was a possibility they picked up um, as a Winter Wolf Brawler, which I modified. And she's supposed to be an NPC in there, and you don't know whether the party's going to go with her or not, but she goes for the most handsome person while she goes for the Paladin. Well, the Paladin sees her as a mission to convert from neutral evil. It becomes a love interest. So talk about opposites attract. All of a sudden, he has converted her. She's still a bit of a, brat, a battler and pragmatic, and she'll defend him because she's tougher. But he watches out for her, too. And he has used abilities where he has almost gotten his own death to save her. I say that for a reason. NPCs can be very fulfilling in an adventure for you as a GM. They're fulfilling for me. Because I watch the party respond in ways that if there weren't those NPCs there, I think they would have gone different ways. And done different things. And handled situations differently. For instance, in the recent battle, Remily gets hit, even though she's invisible, because they see her, um, the soldiers do, and they hit her with a light machine gun, and they critical her, and she goes down. The party makes it their friggin' mission to go out and save her. And they do. They bring her back. They bring cover fire. I mean, even Kal-El, the most stalwart and stoic at times of the war priests, doesn't want to see Remily die. He likes Remily. Remily's part of the party. She's part of the group. They even give her magic items, which, again, one thing I would say is that as a GM or DM, don't make it so the party has to give them magic items. You give them their own cut of the treasure outside of things. You bring up your own things outside of it. You give them their own means to advance. You advance them quietly without taking experience away from the party. What I do is I treat them as if they were one of the five that I divide up the experience for. And just give it separately as a GM's reward for experience they're, they're getting by being with the party. That way you don't penalize the party by calculating experience. So that's one thing I would pass on to you. Don't take, don't make the NPC the hindrance that keeps the party from getting critical items they need, or a cut of the treasure, or whatever. If they want to choose to give the cut of the treasure, then let them. But let the let the party form their own relationship with that NPC to decide which one. What I recommend is this: come up with several NPCs if you want to have ones that tag along with the party to help them that they can choose from. And let them choose what they think would be the most unique fit for the party. The other ones just become side characters that maybe are a one-shot appearance or whatever. Or maybe turn on the party or maybe the other team gets them. Whatever you may want to work with. Them. Um, decide if you have the ability as the GM or DM to handle running an NPC side-by-side -side with characters. Here's what you don't want to do with the NPC. Number one, give away plot. Number two, give away secrets. Number three, give them an unfair advantage over your other NPCs or baddies. Number four, become that, okay, well, we're just going to lean on them to do it for us. 
I've had players that I, or characters that have been that way in PC ones. Remily is not. Remily is a side cast character at best. She's part member of the party. She's important, but she's a side character. Same way with Greta. She's important. She she takes some freaking hits that the party would get annihilated with. And and make no doubt about it, the party would be annihilated several times without. Her. But they still would have done well. They would have just done things different. And so the, that's the key thing that you got to look at with your NPCs. Build a, a true relationship. Don't make them one-dimensional. Make them two-dimensional, three-dimensional. You want your characters, your players in your group, to get a relationship with them that's ongoing. So if you put in a shopkeeper they're dealing with, have them good, do good deals with them. I have a Mercane that they deal with. That They love the Mercane. The Mercane is their trading um, hub. Look up Mercanes that are interesting. So they save the Mercane, so now he's taking an interest. He, they can have some pretty rare items. And he's like, oh, this is cool. I will do with this. And I will take it back. And I will bring you new things. And he gave him a means. And now this was in the book. It was a book NPC, but I fleshed him out. They can send this little messenger. It's a little Onyx messenger with whatever item they want to trade. He'll go in the works, convert the value. They know where they're going to get with him because he set up a deal with them. Do that with them, DMs. Have them negotiate to get a deal. They may not always get the best deal. Sometimes they get ripped off. Sometimes they, he knows they're, 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 he's their only resource. But some cool things can happen. Uh, so keep that in mind. When you have a bad guy NPC, really make them real, and full of life. Don't make them this NPC that just runs up and dies at the hand of the party. Why? I had a couple NPCs that have stuck around. The party doesn't even know yet what they're doing in the background. But they will make a reappearance again. And this is the cool part. They don't even know they're going to make the reappearance. And I'm going to bring them back in. And that's the kind of thing you got to do with them. Try to avoid them dying at the hands of the party if you can help it. Now, don't do something unrealistic. If the party kills them, the party kills them. But you as a GM need to know when, or DM need to know when to pull them out. So, Miss DM, Mr. GM, Miss GM, Mr. DM, you better know when to have this NPC be a self-preservationist. Not all evil is, I'm going to go until I'm annihilated where the party is. That's not how bad guys think. Bad guys like to scurry away and come back and take out their revenge. And usually they put the other ones in the forefront. They're, they're henchlings. So they'll pick ones that are dumb brutes or smart brutes with the promise of power, prestige, the party's body, the party's heart. Whatever it may be, but they'll utilize them. Now, mind you, all those NPCs aren't throwaways either. Some of them can survive. Maybe they're mad at both the bad guy and the party. So now they've got a vendetta. If you've ever seen um, The Blacklist, I love The Blacklist. Beautiful show on TV. Love it to death. Now, you either like it or you don't. Spader, to me, is the ultimate anti-hero. Okay, I love Spader's character. I love Dembe. I love um, Ancient Mondavi. I like her. I love the different characters like, oh, oh, who's the older woman who's the fixer that comes in all the time? She. I love these different elements, even the Cabal. There are some of them that are dumb, that die right away. There's the one cabal survivor, Mr. Smith. Oh, he, the, the, the guy that plays him does such a good job. And, and again, he's a neat character. He is the guy you love to hate. But like a cockroach, he keeps coming back. And he evolves. And at times, he's friendly with the characters, like with Tom and some of the others. And they want to just throttle him, but he makes himself valuable. He even has the gall to kill off P. 
people on his team when they're not living up. I think his character is one of the richest characters when it comes to an NPC. If you want to play an NPC, he is the kind of NPC you want to play. Yes, he is a henchman for the powers that be, but he out-survives the powers that be. Sometimes those little henchmen along the way need to become the ones that out-survive the powers that be. They get their own agenda and their own survival instinct. And then they play it in such a way. Now, he doesn't throw himself. He, he gets into the battle, but he knows when to pull out. He's not dumb. He's not going to stand there and go out in a blaze of glory. Nope, not his purpose. He doesn't think that way. And so when they, every time you think they're going to get him, they're going to get him. They don't. And I love it. And it just twists me inside because I just want to just like, get him already. That's the kind of NPC baddies you need to play. The ones that the party goes, oh my gosh, they're back again? I thought we got rid of them last time. I thought my fireball annihilated them. What the heck? How did they survive? Why? Why? And it's just that little thorn that keeps pricking at them. But never quite puts himself into a position to where they're going to get annihilated. Those are the kind of NPCs that you develop, that I've developed, that I love. Huh. Tarbafon, character out of Carrying Crown, that was just kind of a side immortal that is an epic iconic for the inner sea. He is a lich of the liches. He is the master lich. The party does something weird to destroy his lair where he's being confined by the good guys. Releasing him and his followers, he actually survives because he is a mythic. Mythics in Pathfinder mean they don't die easily. They're like um, Hercules and some others that don't die easily. He escapes somewhere that the players would never think. And even into this new campaign, he's a thorn in the party's side. He sent someone from Eox, the world he's on right now, to mess with the party. Because he wanted his own little pound of flesh on this planet that they're on. And so he saw it as an opportunity to deal with these goody goodies. It's my way of reintroducing him again. The party hasn't figured it out yet. He's going to do it again. He is. And I'm going to keep enjoying it because he's always that reoccurring one. And in Mummy's Mask that's coming up, don't be surprised if you hear about him and his people again. You're going to find that I have a way of keeping bringing back these epics to continue the story long after the other characters have moved on. Why is that? Because it drives the party crazy. And it keeps it fun and lively. And it brings back the, oh, you didn't bring him back. Why in this campaign did you bring him? Why are you doing this to us? Thumbs up. I've done my job as a GM. You can do that. You can keep having the bad guy that reoccurs through seven campaigns. You can do it. What did you do? Ugh. Mini G. Yay me. Yeah, I can fix it. We will see. Yeah. I love how she thinks I can fix anything because I'm dad. Dad can fix anything. Right, Janet? <laughs> right. Uh, dad can fix anything. I don't know how I'm going to, but I'm going to find a way. Um, but no, have that... NPC that keeps recurring. I've had Flynn Greywalker, who's my navigator for Skull and Shackles, show up again as a respin with some new players of mine. They love him. He's he's that kind of character I can keep bringing back and keep him going. Uh, I know that uh, what is it? Uh, 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 Jason Bowman for for Pathfinder has um, uh, Karzog the Barbarian. And Karzog keeps coming back. He's the manly kind of barbarian who thinks he's kind of handsome. Um, <laughs> oh, Lord. And I love him because he's like the iconic that just... Or, no, it's not Karzog. What is it? Oh, my gosh. I'm sorry, Jason. I, again, you'll watch this sometime. 
But I remember him. I do, the barbarian. He just keeps coming back. I love it. To me, that is a GM that's epic when you have things come back. So you have to decide, again, with your NPCs, where you want to put them. Do you want them to have recurring roles? How do you want them to fit in? Do you want them to adventure with the party? Do you want them just to be there with the party? Do you want them to show up as a bad guy? Do you want them to show up as the thorn in their side? One day maybe an ally, next day maybe a bad guy, mercenary for hire. Um, how do you want them to be introduced? Maybe they become a ruler in the land that the party saves, and that, then that, that beneficiary helps the new parties as they come in and come along. Again, try to have a story that makes sense with them. Yes, sometimes using them as a sarcastic tool, a humor tool and that, that's great, but it kind of gets overused and overplayed. Find ways to make them unique and memorable in good ways. Endearing. Love to hate them. Um, dang, they show up at the worst possible times all of the friggin' time. What the heck? How do they know? Why do they keep coming up? Um, boy, that, they're just in time to give me that sale of that magic item that I so badly needed when I needed it. Find your ways to really make them memorable. Have your stories. I have lots of stories in my NPCs, probably more so than my, my characters that I've played. And I'll be honest with you folks, I've got more NPC stories than PC stories. Just because my NPCs are memorable to the parties. They are helpful. They do adventure with them. The party's kind of... But, but I don't force it down their throat. They're not there from the very beginning. They pick them up along the way and find out which one would be the best fit. And I let them run with it. And I only interject as needed. Um, but you can make them that part of the party that is just ongoing and epic. Thanks again. It's a great little dive into NPCs. It's kind of a little side banter. But you know what? Sometimes these little talks evolve and evoke. So I hope it does for you guys. Rick M, the GM, signing out. Love you folks. Keep watching.